Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Online Educational Spaces by and for Librarians, Best Practices and Models. Here is a slide from our sponsors and supporters. And here we have an opportunity to indicate where are each where are we located, each one of us. So everybody can go through the exercise and uh, click on the pointer and point to your location. Great. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. My name is Loida Garcia Fibo. I am president of Information New Wave, an international nonprofit, not for profit organization that seeks to bring education to multi ethnic population in developing countries. I am also uh, honored to be a member um, of the American Library Association Executive Board and a member of the IFLA, International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions um, Governing Board. Here, it's a slide with the informationaway.org um, website. And um, I invite you to read more about it and uh, get involved with us. We work in developing countries in Latin America. And there are great things happening in Iberoamerica, Latin America, and and we are so excited to present a program featuring great work done by our colleagues in these regions. We believe these great things are happening in the regions and there are initiatives that could be models for other library and information professionals around the globe. And that is the reason why we are presenting this program in English, because we want to share these wonderful things with the entire world. Our colleagues have created alternative online educational communities to provide professional development to librarians and LIS students whom otherwise wouldn't be able to access them. Our event today includes useful information about how they develop these online spaces, best practices, and models. Our first presenter will be Mauricio Fino Garzón. He is a member of Aprender 3C. Aprender 3C. He is an LIS professor from Colombia as well. Our next presenter is Natalie Bohr. She is a member of Infotecarios and affiliate researcher at the Instituto de Investigaciones Bibliotecológicas y de la Información. That is at the uh, National Autonomous University in Mexico. And Natalie is going to tell us more, uh, perhaps, about what she's doing there. She, she got a wonderful um, Fulbright uh, grant. And uh, we are all very excited about her work. And our last presenter for today is Maria Garcia Puente. She is a founder of Social Biblio, and she is also a medical librarian from Spain. Our event today will be recorded, and we will share the link to the recording soon through listservs and social media. We are going to hear from the presenters and have a Q&A session at the end. 
uh, that said, feel free to ask questions through the chat box during the presentation, and we can answer those as the presentations continue and at the end, at the end as well. Well, now it's my pleasure to present our first speaker, Mario, uh, Mauricio Pino Garzón. Mauricio. Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to go on saying we are very honored to be part of this uh, conversation. Thank you, Loida and Library 2.0 for the invitation. Uh, so time is short, and uh, let's begin. Our presentation is titled Innovation, Knowledge, and Social Learning for Information Professionals in Latin America. Uh, and I want to begin with a reflection. Last year, I wrote a paper with a colleague uh, about digital humanities and information science. Uh, this the common beyond uh, like that. Museums, libraries, and educational and research institutions are some of the most meaningful knowledge centers in our society. Since the late uh, 20th century, these knowledge centers have grown to the some social space, social space. Uh, a change that the uh, author Bruno de Bruxelles has attributed to the rise of the digital, which has served as a, transfor a transformational catalyst for knowledge centers, reinventing, reinventing uh, the, the knowledge centers, the new the savoir uh, requires the presence, presence of a hacking culture that transforms a knowledge-based society into a society based on shared knowledge. Uh, that's our logo uh, and what it means. Aprender uh, trece, or in English, is like learn trece. It's, uh, it's the union of three words, uh, comunidad, conocimiento, colaboración. That's something like uh, a web-based community of knowledge, uh, of knowledge sharing uh, and social learning. And what we want um, and what we do, Aprender 3C is a project aimed, aimed uh, to, uh, at, at the students, students, teachers, and, and link it to the world of information science, library and information science, that seeks to collaborate in the formation of transversal competence and, innova and innovative to support their academic and professional development, while, uh, while generating an alternative space for Latin American professionals for meeting and exchange uh, of, exp of experience among colleagues uh, through the region. Um, that's the, the interface of or the website. Uh, what, how we do, uh, we, we mainly use uh, webinars. Uh, we, each Thursday, we offer a new and free, uh, a new and free webinar uh, from uh, one of the the colleague we have in the Latin America and um, sometimes in Spain. Uh, we look for people who are related uh, to libraries, archives, museums, and information industry to uh, offer the, the webinar uh, related with one specific topic. Sometimes uh, we talk uh, about digital humanities, sometimes uh, copyright and public domain, or uh, sometimes education, so that's the idea. They share the 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 the, the, the experience uh, who has born into uh, from from the from the the, the countries of uh, Latin America. Uh, this is one of the, this is one of the the, the, uh, from the webinars, we use Google Hangouts and we offer uh, the webinars online. But now we are offering uh, some uh, webcasts. It's, it's, it's similar. The difference uh, is uh, 
we previously recorded the seminar and we posted after. So sometimes we we, we find we find people who are very very uh, uh, migrants who is working with uh, some really specific uh, uh, areas. So we have some problems with the time zone. So it's better to use the webcast and uh, have the opportunity to, to, to come to them. After each uh, webinar or webcast, we we we, we have a, we post in our website uh, the learning resources. It's something like uh, a resume of the of the uh, of the talk of the, of the presentation, and include uh, the video, the video recording on YouTube. Uh, what people talk on, on, on Twitter. Uh, the slides uh, and uh, a short summary of the of the presentation. This is how uh, uh, a learning resource uh, looks in our uh, website. What do we use? Well, we have to use uh, mainly uh, open source uh, software. Um, we use a lot of uh, social media uh, networks. Uh, one, this is one from the, the, the tools we are using right now. Uh, we have, I have to, to, to say something, and uh, the is is born from um, another project. Uh, that project is social media. So Maria will talk uh, later from. This, this, this uh, initiative, but uh, we can say that Aprender Prese is like a little son from this project in Spain. Uh, what is our social media presence uh, right now? We have uh, 1,699 likes on Facebook. Uh, we, we have we have uh, 800 uh, followers on Twitter. Uh, 400 followers on, on YouTube, almost uh, 390 downloads in, in SlideShare. Uh, and so on Google Plus, we have uh, 230 uh, followers. We have now, right now we have uh, like two years, we are doing this like two years, for two years. Uh, well, this is from more analytics. Uh, the website numbers in this almost two years, we have uh, 19,908 uh, sessions. It's like uh, a, a huge number for me because we are very, very specific uh, platform. So uh, all, all, uh, all visits, all users we have counts. And it's very meaningful for us. Uh, in, in, in the present it can uh, can be different in, in every country of Latin America. For example, for example, in Argentina, there is a large uh, percentage of people uh, who connect with Aprender to say. Uh, could be because the project uh, born in for, for in Argentina, uh, with the collaboration of two uh, uh, brands, so maybe th that's why uh, Argentina has more more impact in the in the in the website. Uh, Spain is another uh, huge uh, community in the in the uh, state, uh, United States, Mexico, uh, Chile. Uh, Colombia, and for example, Colombia, and it's very sad because uh, I, w I will, I will, uh, I will prefer uh, seeing uh, Colombia in the top, the top three. But well, that's uh, something we will 
Recently, we made a SWOT matrix uh, because uh, we only identified that uh, we, we have the need, the need to identify uh, what, what makes us unique, why uh, Appendix CC is different from other, from similar initiatives, and that's why we made this uh, matrix, and we are doing uh, the analysis, analysis uh, of the old, old matrix. But, but we identified some strengths, uh, um, opportunities, weakness, and threats uh, that uh, if we made, if that let it, uh, let it us take um, uh, decisions for the, for the continuity of the, of the uh, discipline. So we identified that in these uh, almost two years, uh, there is uh, some uh, in-match and online reputation uh, of the appendix of the, of the brand, because uh, we have to say that people who is part of appendix of the, my, my partners, are uh, very um, representative in the library information uh, sector in, 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 in the region. Uh, there is something we identified that is very important, uh, the content. Uh, we have a good documentation of everything we do, and that's very good because uh, people can find uh, everything about all the awareness uh, we already made. Uh, and something that is very valuable for us is uh, we are working on in new initiatives. Uh, we, we find that uh, the webinars, um, the webcasts are very important. Giving voice to other professionals is important, but we need to uh, do something different. So that's why there is uh, some projects uh, in the world. Uh, we want. Uh, we hope that at the end of the year, we have uh, um, some of, of them uh, working. Opportunities we identify that language, common language in the country, is uh, very important. Um, internet connectivity is uh, better and better in, in almost all, all, all the countries. Uh, for example, Argentina, Colombia, Mexico. Uh, the rate of connection of the internet is uh, uh, it's, uh, growing up. Uh, we are doing some wavelength um, partnerships with another uh, initiative um, in, and are related with projects with that uh, extended or vision of what we want with Appendix to say. But we, uh, we also identified some weakness, uh, like the business model. We want uh, to, we want to, to make uh, of this uh, something uh, we can uh, make in, 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 uh, another income of what we do. Um, well, that's another problem, the sustainability uh, and the time, because uh, that's something we do in uh, our free time. So the dedication of, of, uh, of we have to, 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 to take or uh, make uh, the dependent to say life is uh, very hard. So that's uh, true of our main weakness. Um, what's the, the, the major risk we have in spite of the time zones because we designed the hours we made the awareness. Uh, for example, in Colombia, we can uh, uh, design that everybody is going uh, to home after work. So I, I think that that's why we identify a low participation from Colombia. Uh, the engagement uh, to people to be, to 
doing with the uh, initiative and the depending uh, of the, the technology uh, platform because we use another uh, a lot of uh, tools that uh, that you don't have to pay so we don't have we don't know if more we have to pay for that or uh, that uh, uh, disappear and uh, who we are? We are Fernando Ariel Lopez from Argentina. He's uh, he studied library information science at the University of Buenos Aires, and he has a uh, master in library and digital information service from the at the from the University Carlos III Madrid. He works already in the CAISET, and he's the head librarian uh, in the at the Met, uh, University. Uh, Fernando Gabriel. He is also from Argentina. He studied communication, uh, but he is very, very uh, in, the, in the library sector in Argentina. Uh, he, he has a lot of work in the, in the moment, uh, a lot of jobs. He is working with the uh, Universidad Nacional de Luján, uh, province of Buenos Aires, and he is uh, also high school teacher and college, and college professor. Uh, from the other part of the continent, we have uh, Javier Leiva. He is uh, very popular uh, because he does a lot of things in Spain. He studied information documentation in the University of Leon. Uh, he has a librarianship bachelor in the, of the uh, University of Barcelona and uh, a master in library and digital information service in the he works mainly with, uh, as consultant, uh, professor, uh, giving talks in Latin America. So that's why we have a, 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 that connection with Javier. Um, but uh, me, Mauricio Pino, I studied library information science in Bogotá. Uh, I'm really, I really, I'm doing a master in innovation and an MBA. Uh, I work uh, as training manager in a in a enterprise. Um, also, on the tour at the at the University Javeriana with uh, information department. Uh, but mainly uh, the the thing in aprender to see aprender to see is the people. So uh, we invite all to you to. To be part of uh, the community. Mm -hmm. I can say, can I, can I say, uh, we want to keep the conversation live. So there is all the information uh, from the website or mail or, or email address. Uh, we can, uh, you can uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, Google Plus. Even in LinkedIn, we have a, a, a group, so we can. We hope we can see you there. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you. Now it is our pleasure to present Natalie Bauer uh, from Infotecarios. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, webinar, this conference, online library conference. Today, I'm joining you from Mexico City, Mexico, and I'll be talking about the crowdsourcing uh, collaborative blog, Infotecarios, uh, which is also another project that Mauricio is involved with, so we're colleagues on this, on this project as well. So welcome. What is Infotecarios? Uh, Infotecarios is a blog, so it's online. The, the address is listed below, so you can check it out. And it's a collaborative space whose objective is to create content through sharing news, ideas, and opinions around libraries, archives, and information sciences, but centered on questions, ideas, and developments in the Latin American context. It's a project that's based on the concept of crowdsourcing, which seeks to take advantage of the collective intelligence of its participants, who are the writers. 
Uh, a little bit of background on the project. Um, Infotecarios was created out of the uh, out of a first blog called Biblog Tecarios, which was founded in 2010 by Julian Marquina in Spain. And um, Biblog, Teca Biblog Tecarios is more of a a space for for Spanish librarians, archivists, and information scientists to share their experiences. Um, but there was a need for a Latin American and Caribbean space as well. Um, so Marquina created Infotecarios in 2012 as the Latin American and Caribbean co counterpart to the original blog, Bidlog Tecarios. And a lot of times the two blog platforms still collaborate together on, on projects and series. So who participates in Infotecarios? Um, Infotecarios, because it's crowdsourcing, um, has 14 different countries in Latin America and the Caribbean represented. And within those 14 countries, there are more than 30 writers that regularly contribute to the platform. Um, the platform, uh, the website publishes pieces nearly every day. Um, if not every day, at least every other day. And all of those pieces are written by a different person every day. They also um, have the participation of collaborators who present via uh, spaces called firmas invitadas, which are invited writers. Um, we also do a lot of interviews of of um, other librarians, archivists, information professionals that are presented on the blog, and also special collaborations between um, Infotecarios and other blogs, groups, and library and information initiatives uh, throughout Latin America and the Caribbean, but also throughout the world as well. So what is crowdsourcing exactly, and how does Infotecarios capitalize on the concept to bring new and fresh content to its readers on an almost daily basis. Let's talk a little bit about the concept of crowdsourcing. So according to Enrique Estelles and Fernando Gonzalez in the article towards an integrated crowdsourcing definition, which appeared in the Journal of Information Science in 2012, crowdsourcing is a type of participative online activity in which an individual, an institution, a nonprofit organization, or company proposes to a group of individuals a varying knowledge, heterogeneity, and number via a flexible open call, the voluntary undertaking of a task. The undertaking of the task, a variable complexity and modularity in which the crowd should participate, uh, bringing their work, money, knowledge, and or experience always entails mutual benefit. The user will receive the satisfaction of a given type of need, be it economic, social recognition, self-esteem, or the development of individual skills, while the crowdsourcer will obtain and utilize their advantage what the user has brought to the venture, whose form will depend on the type of activity undertaken. So underneath all of this academic ease, um, what we basically have is um, the idea that Infotecarios is co collecting its uh, collective intelligence through a variety of writers who have a variety of different jobs, different experiences, experiences in different languages, or in different countries um, throughout the region to come together and to be able to share that knowledge so that everybody can access that knowledge. So how does Infotecarios work? Um, like I said, it's based on the crowdsourcing model. So it's basically the hive mind of the, the different participants and the collaborators and their willingness to collaborate through the, the platform, which does involve a time commitment, um, having to produce a new piece of content at least every month, every other month, um, looking, thinking about new content to contribute, getting people to participate through interviews or getting um, 
their colleagues to write a piece as a, an invited writer. So there is um, definitely a a time commitment and resource commitment to the project if if the person wants to be a part of the project. So how does a group of volunteers make this crowdsourcing project work? Um, it's done through different levels of coordination. So we have our main administrators who um, basically motivate everyone to make sure that they keep posting, that they sign up for the days that they're going to write their piece, um, to make sure that the comments are being approved so they appear on the blog, um, to recruit new members, um, to make sure that the group is aware of new collaborations or new partnerships, and also to create those new collaborations and partnerships. So that's the, the role of the main administrators. And again, that's a volunteer uh, position. We also have people that are responsible for social media and marketing, um, getting the news out there um, when something new is, is posted to the blog on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of the different social media outlets. Um, and this isn't just a one-time posting, you know, it's throughout the day, getting people interested in, in the different uh, new content that's being produced. And also um, making sure that we're keeping track of our, our statistics and our uh, institutional knowledge. Um, so we, we make sure that there is somebody coordinating collecting statistics, looking at Google Analytics for the site, um, marking when we have a new milestone on followers or likes on, on our different social media platforms and also keeping track of who is writing for Infotecarios and, and where they're from so that we make sure that we have a balanced um, representation throughout the, the region of writers. So a little bit of statistics. Um, so you have an idea of the reach of this project. Um, we have over 760 unique posts to the blog, which you can consult on infotecarios.com. Um, and these posts, these 760 plus posts are on a variety of different topics and from a variety of different writers from different countries. And on those posts, we've reached uh, nearly the 1,500 mark. We have 1,245 comments. So people are reading the post, commenting on the post, starting conversations um, and, and this allows uh, the crowdsourcing idea to go even further in the sense that our readers are are taking that information and creating their own meaning and content out of out of those posts so the page views just for this year um, we're almost in November so the year's about over um, we have hundred and ninety thousand page views just for this year, uh, and that represents 105,000 unique visitors to the site. And the top 10 countries that visit the site are Mexico, Spain, Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, Peru, Chile, Ecuador, United States, and Costa Rica. And on social media, we're getting more popular every day. Um, when I checked the other night, we had 4,885 Facebook likes, so we're getting close to the 5,000 mark. And we've surpassed the 5,000 uh, mark uh, for followers on Twitter just recently. So as you can see, uh, the site is, in its three years of existence, is, is getting more popular by the day. And um, the reach is even getting all the way to the United States uh, with the Spanish speaking populations and people that can read Spanish are, are accessing this information as well. So I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the, the opportunities that Infotecarios has had to uh, reach audiences that might not read or speak Spanish. Um, 
because this this presentation that I'm giving today is in English, so you might want to check out these resources specifically if you're not able to maybe read the content that's in Spanish. There are some opportunities where we've worked to bring in more U.S. English speaking audiences to the different activities um, that we have. So what you see on the screen is an interview that um, Fernando Gutierrez and I did of a digital humanities librarian at the Michigan State University, Thomas Padilla. And we, Thomas participated in the interview in English, so he wrote his answers to us to our questions in English, and then we translated his, his answers into Spanish and posted the interview questions and answers to Infotecarios in Spanish. And then Thomas has his own blog, uh, and website, and the address is listed on the the slide. It's kind of hard to see, but you can probably copy and paste it. And that's where his the questions and his answers in English appear, and they're both cross-linked to one another on each website. So the 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 post in Infotecarios has the link to English, and his post on his website has the link to the Spanish version. So that's one way we've been able to collaborate with. Um, librarians and archivists in, in multiple languages. Also, Infotecarios, going with this crowdsourcing model in HiveMind, um, we have launched a collaboration called Voces del Sur, so Voices of the South, Rethinking LIS Education from the Latin American and Caribbean Perspective, and this is in conjunction with Hack Library School. It's hacklibraryschool.com. And with this blog, uh, Hack Library School um, focuses more on rethinking library and information sciences education. So we've hosted a monthly question and answer with uh, Infotecario contributors who will talk about library and information sciences education in their countries, and we post the question and answer interview style posts uh, on, in English on Hack Library School and in Spanish on Infotecarios. So that's just another way that we've been able to collaborate across languages and library traditions. So how can you participate? Um, we have the firmas invitadas, which are the guest posts. Um, so if you're interested in sharing your your knowledge with Infotecarios, you can uh, contact us. Um, any of the, the Infotecarios, uh, you can contact directly and ask to schedule a post that you write. Um, the posts have to be in Spanish, so you either need to be able to write in Spanish or have somebody translate for you. Um, you can also participate by doing an interview, or you can actually become an Infotecario. Um, we're always looking for new members and new writers. Um, the obligation is that you're willing to collaborate, volunteer your time, and post, post monthly. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, SlideShare, and you can subscribe to the blog as well through an RSS feed. Um, we're at Infotecarios on Twitter, and it's infotecarios.com to follow the blog. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, this is great information so far from Aprender to Say and Infotecarios. Um, as you can see, our uh, models that we are presenting today are from Latin America and Spain. These are in Spanish, but we think they are so good and um, other library colleagues can um, perhaps um, use them as a models too. So we wanted to share them with the entire world. And um, our next presenter, our, our la last presenter for today, is Maria Garcia from Social Biblio, and she's coming uh, to us from Spain. Maria. Hello. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here presenting Social Video at Library 2.0. My name is Maria Garcia Puente. I'm a medical librarian from Spain, and I'm going to talk about Social Video, a project started by Paula Traver and myself. Social Video is an online community related to librarianship and information science in which we can all learn together to conduct webinars. Cooperative learning is our philosophy, and we assume that we all have something to teach and something to learn. For this purpose, Social Video has been constituted as a platform for collab co collaborative training. Social Video is aimed for information professionals and also to the users of information units wishing to train on a specific area. However, Anyone is welcome to Social Video. Access is free and open. It was late 2011. It seemed it was difficult to find a job related to librarianship for those who had finished their degree in Spain. We knew how opportunities were increased with additional training and how expensive that could be. Here's the thing. You don't have a job because you don't have any experience and you don't have enough income to pay for your training to get the experience required. We knew initiatives where webinars were the ideal way to teach and learn. We looked for this in our field librarianship and information science, and we found some paid webinars, but we couldn't find anything for free. We realized that we could do something to, to improve the situation, so we started to think how social video could be implemented. It has to be something collaborative. So we asked some of our friends at universities and libraries if they wanted to join us. They were experts in some topics, and we asked them if they would share some of their knowledge with us, uh, with the students and other professionals. Until now, we have had 118 experts. Some of them asked us to collaborate. Some others were recruited by us. Every one of them were amazing in their talks. Next step was to choose a platform to share the webinars. It had to be a place where our, where our experts could talk through our webcam, because we think that saying the face of the person who's speaking is important to get the audience. Another important aspect of the webinar is the ability to share a presentation, a PowerPoint to support the talk. At the same time, we knew the importance of the students' interactions with teachers, so a chat program was imperative. We chose Press IQ, uh, we chose uh, with IQ Software because it was a good tool with all the characteristics we were looking for. Then, we had to prepare the internal work. Paula lives in Castellón, and I live in Madrid. We were separated by, by over 400 kilometers, so we had to use the Internet collaborative tools to communicate. Google Talk, Hangout, Drive, Google Calendar, and Dropbox are the main tools we daily use. They are free and easy to use, and they had everything we needed to work remotely. Of course, we also used the phone and the email. Finally, we prepared a blog to share the information with the world. Socialvideo.com. We created profiles in Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, Storyfy, Slideshare, and LinkedIn. In our first year, 2012, we started with, with one webinar per week on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. We were looking for a new concept, so we chose that time because we didn't want to match social, social video with working hours and since attendees could follow the classes from their tablets, iPad, or smartphones, we imagine everyone on their pajamas watching Social Biblia. In 2013, we had the collaboration of three librarians from Latin America, Fernando Ariel López, Fernando Gabriel Gutiérrez, and Cristian Maturana. They were responsible for moderating the webinar on Tuesday. During that year, we held two webinars a week. At the end of, the two, uh, of 2013, we started to think about a spin-off of Social Video and created Aprender 13. 
From 2014, we are broadcasting a webinar every two weeks, here at the same time and day. Our first post was published on 27th of December 2011. It was a welcome post. Twelve days later, we published the first, po the first post announcing the first webinar, Sotero, a reference manager. The day after the webinar was, was broadcasted, we published a post with the recorded webinar and the PowerPoint presentation. This and all of the webinars are all accessible even today through the archive on socialvideo.com. Our first webinar, featured by Julia Alonso Arevalo, had about 219 learners. Our experts are really important to us. Uh, they're sharing their time and knowledge with us, so we created a special recognition page for them. We call it the Experts page. On the Experts page, you can find a short biography and photo of each speaker. Each Experts profile is linked to the post where the webinars are announced and the materials are stored. We contact experts or they contact us and we start to prepare everything. To schedule for the next three months, appointments with our experts for a rehearsal with the platform, advertising on our blog and social networks, answer questions and doubts about the webinar or platform use, etc. One of the most important goals for social video is to give access to information and training support for the students and continuing education for professionals. One day you can be the teacher and the next day is student. What do you want to be today? That's our motto. Anyone is welcome to contribute because we think that each person has the ability to teach something and uh, because a new point of view can lead to a new product or a new concept or even a new investigation in information science. During this time, we think your software was changing some features, so we have to adapt to this new situation. Finally, we realized that these changes were affecting the use of social media by students, so we did a research during the summer, and this last quarter of the year, we are implementing changes in the way of spreading the webinars, broadcasting, and advertising with a new platform. Also, we are editing the recorded classes and uploading them to our new YouTube channel. We are always a bit excited about the webinar. How many students will come today? Will everything work okay? Will you attend this like the webinar? Will our experts feel comfortable? All these questions make us always be alert and trying to improve every day. Social Video has broadcasted 124 webinars with more, with more than 8,000 live attendees in total. In the last three years, the archive has been accessed more than more than 1,800 times. This is a great success and usage continues to grow. Last year, we received the National Award of Innovation and Quality from CEDIC, the Spanish Scientific and Information Society, in recognition of Social Video. We are really proud of this award. This encourages us to continue with our project. Paula and myself, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here at Library 2.0 and talk about our passion and hobby, social video. Thank you very much and feel free to check our profiles at socialvideo.com and contact us if you have further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. This is uh, great information. I especially liked the slide that said that uh, social biblio is exciting. I think collaboration among colleagues is exciting and this is another um, very good model with some good practices to follow by other colleagues that would like to um, develop online spaces like these that can um, get us closer to one another. Uh, we do have 10 minutes for uh, questions and answers, and we can get them through the chat, or um, I think the chat is the best way. Um, and so while we uh, receive some of those um, 
questions. I do have uh, a, a question for our three presenters. And um, I'm going to ask Mauricio if he can uh, maybe turn up the volume a little bit so we can hear him well. Um, it's, uh, if you go to the upper left, you'll see the little microphone, and then you can move the bar a little bit to increase your audio. Um, but so my question is, um, if you can share with us two best practices of uh, the information you share with us, if you uh, could select two best practices to uh, share with other our audience today um, that would like to um, perhaps replicate an online space for um, uh, colleagues. And um, so I will start, um, let's see if Mauricio is, is on. If you can share with us uh, two best practices. Uh, okay. uh -huh. I think uh, one of the, of the, the best practices we have in the CN5 is um, uh, there are, there are uh, a lot of uh, professionals who have uh, things to, to say. So we think that one best practice is uh, being the, 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 the voice of uh, a lot of professionals who, who never in public who are not familiar familiar with technology, but has uh, great ideas, has um, uh, great experiences. So one one of the, of, of the recommendation of the best practice is uh, let connect the people. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you. Um, can, can next, maybe Natalie or Maria? Hi. Um, I would say the, uh, the, I'm not a coordinator in Infotech Adios, I'm just a, <laughs> just a contributor. Um, but I think one of the best practices is building the network and and feeding the network. Um, Infotecarios, from what I've seen, works because of the the willingness for the the writers and the coordinators to work together. Um, just because of the strong relationships that they've developed from working together, and it's just really nice to see anytime um, if someone travels to a different country. The first thing that they do is try to seek out the colleagues that they've been working with online. There's just a really strong personal and professional connection. So that's really important for making things um, last and and in working through the issues with technology and and everything like that. It just makes it so worth it um, when you get to that point. That is so important. There are. We still have um, to overcome some issues with technology, and um, that's why it's so important to develop uh, these type of presentations and, and share with the world, because that way we can continue conversations on how to tackle them. Uh, Maria, would you like to share with us two best practices from your uh, social video? Uh, yeah, I think the the main thing is that uh, social video is free and open, and is open for everybody. Everyone is welcome to contribute uh, because we think that each person has the ability to teach something. So uh, your point of view can uh, can be always different from my point of view. Maybe we think the same thing, but um, the the way you are um, explaining something uh, can lead to a new concept or a new investigation or maybe it's um, something new and I think it's uh, our the best thing is uh, you can always be a teacher not not just a learner. Great, thank you so much. Uh, to our presenters today. Um, if any one of you have any last words 
to share with us, feel free to do so. Okay, well, um, the, the recording of this session will be available um, very soon, and we want to share it uh, through listservs and through the different websites and social media. And um, the, uh, the slides uh, include contact information for our speakers, so you can contact them as well through uh, as you look at the slides and maybe you uh, have some questions or ideas to share with them. Um, so we are very happy that this was possible today and our presenters uh, had the time to join us from Spain, Colombia, Mexico. We are all in different time zones and uh, we uh, dedicated this time to share uh, with you, our colleagues from all over the world. Uh, eventually we'll receive this presentation. So thank you so much, uh, Maria Garcia, Mauricio Fino Garzon, Natalie Bauer, uh, for your uh, presentation and your time today. And we will see uh, our colleagues another time online somewhere. Thank you. Bye.